Welcome to Chestnut Assembly's podcast. Welcome to Chestnut Assembly's podcast. Are you ready? L- let's go. Well, hello, everybody. This is Tony Cotto, uh, lead pastor over at Chestnut Assembly of God today, bringing you a podcast on March 22nd, 2024. I can't believe that April is right around the corner and it's just time is just moving so quickly. But what a great day to be alive in this world and to be serving God and to be uh, used by God in in these days. And it's just a, a beautiful, beautiful day. And so we welcome everybody for listening to the podcast today. We really pray that you've been enjoying our topics in the last few weeks. They've been a, a little fun and upbeat and, and light, uh, but today uh, we, we, we're we going to bring a more serious topic uh, to you and maybe a little controversial to many, and so I'm just really asking you right now, uh, don't, don't shut it off. Don't don't uh, have preconceived ideas about what we're going to be talking about today or what the the biblical views that we're going to be bringing forth today. But we are going to be talking about a very serious topic today, and the topic is on abortion. And so um, just keep your hearts ready for for some of the things that we are going to discuss today. But, but, but before we get started, I've got my son here, Jonah, and he's going to just uh, do some introduction with some stats. And so go ahead, Jonah, share what you've got. Yeah. Hey, guys. How you doing? I'm really excited to be on the podcast. It is a heavy subject, so just uh, sit down. If you have kids in the room, I would probably tell them uh, to not be in the room at this time. This is an explicit subject, so we just wanted to get that out there. But here's a stat for you from KFF.org. They're an independent source for health policy research. So between August 22nd and August 20, uh, 2023, I'm sorry, August 22 to August 23, one year, 61,330 babies were actually aborted in that time. Now, this is reported by 46 reporting areas. There was six that did not report their data. Now, is is that for the state of New Jersey, Jonas? State of New Jersey. That's for Yeah, that, that's just for the state of New Jersey. And uh, so I, I did the math and I did the averages. So if you put an average on um, the six that did not report, it's basically 100 per reporting station a month. So 100. So that basically means we're looking at over 70,000 abortions on that. It's probably more than that uh, on average per month. I'm sorry, per year. So 70,000 abortions uh, in New Jersey per year. So, yeah. So according to the same source, um, 100,000 babies are actually born in New Jersey a year. So uh, I guess the first question would be, um, you know, can you personally, as a pastor from your pastoral experience, can you discuss the emotional challenges or spiritual challenges that individuals may be church members experience before, during, and after an abortion? Yeah, that's a, that's definitely a, a heavy loaded question. This topic is heavy mm-hmm. and loaded. And the truth is that we can go for days and talk about this debate about this. And, and so this is not, um, an exhaustive conversation on this by any means of the, the imagination. What I do want to mention, I'm, I'm, I'm I am going to answer that question. Um, but I, I just, I just want to mention that, um, we in no way, uh, myself as a pastor or here at Chestnut Assembly of God, um, cause some people would say you're becoming too political. You're, right. you're, you're, you're taking a political stance on this issue. The truth is that this is not a political issue, although it has been a pawn for politics, and both sides have used it for for uh, politics. But the truth of the matter is that this is not a political issue. This is a biblical issue, and this issue in the heart of God is very devastating. And let me just mention this, and and I know that th- this may offend some people, and that's not the intent. You've got to understand my heart. Uh, You know, I listened to the State of the Union with uh, President Biden a couple weeks ago, Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, obviously I, I pray for him. The Bible tells us that we ought to pray for our leaders. And although I don't agree with a lot of what he stands for and what he's trying to do, just I'll just get that out there. I'm sure that's, that's pretty obvious. Uh, but he, he mentioned one particular thing in the State of the Union, and he said that if he is reelected as president, that he will attempt to overturn Roe v. Wade again. And uh, that's devastating. So we have a president in office that is trying to uh, legitimize and legalize the murder of unborn children all over this nation. And for the believer, for you and me and every believer that's listening to this podcast, uh, listen, I'm very even. I try to be even and try to listen to both sides. But I, I have to question us as believers if we are voting for people or supporting people uh, in politics that approve of abortion. I, I've got to question your relationship with God. And that's heavy. That's a heavy statement. I've got to wonder what you stand for. Uh, because it, this is not a an issue of Democrats or Republicans or liberals. This is a question of the right of the unborn child to be born. Children that are a blessing from God. Children that God created. So this is not a political issue. This is very much a biblical issue that we in this country, in the United States of America, we have violated in a very detestable way. We have violated this 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 thing by by having abortions and and we'll get into the different reasons why people. but I, I just I want to mention that if if you're a woman or a, a man whose girlfriend or wife has had an abortion, that this is in no way. We're not trying to bring offense. We're not trying to bring judgment. Uh, we are not trying to make you feel worse than you already feel. There's already enough shame and condemnation and fear when it comes to when it comes to abortion. And um, here's the truth of the matter, Jonah. You asked me the question about some of the implications and the repercussions of of women that have had abortions. Uh, I have been pastoring now for over twenty years. I have never heard of one woman or one man ever come to me and say, I am so happy that we had an abortion 15 years ago. I am so happy that we made that decision. If anything, here's what I have found. Great regret. I have found heavy condemnation. Mm. I have found shame. And in regards to um, warfare and in regards to how the enemy works in our lives, if we don't deal, if the men and the women don't deal with the emotions and the implications and the scars that remain um, after making a decision like this, then the enemy will use that. The devil himself can use that as a legal right, as, a, as an open door in their lives, uh, unresolved emotions. Un unresolved shame and condemnation, and he can literally uh, bring torment uh, to that. And I have seen uh, some women, even because of their shame and their regret, and they're so sorry for what they've done, uh, I've seen some mental health issues uh, evolve because of that, and right. depression and anxiety, and sometimes even more serious mental health issues. So. Uh, there is no good thing that can ever come from a man or a woman making the decision to have, to have an abortion. But I will say, on the other side of that, we as Christians, when we are dealing with people that have made that decision, that we are to be compassionate and loving and, and caring Let's not forget that, that the Bible does say, Jonah, that let all that we do be done in love. 
And here's what it says in, in, in 1 John 4 and 8, that anyone who does not love, watch it, this is very powerful. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. That's 1 John 4 and 8. And, mm-hmm. and, and the basis of our, uh, it's not even an opinion, but the basis of our stance on abortion is not my opinion. Right. You don't need to hear my opinion. My opinion doesn't matter. But we are standing on the biblical statements from God, His, His, uh, His Word. And here's the bottom line, and this is this this is gonna sting, and I don't want it to sting, but we need to listen, we need to stop sugarcoating things. We need to stop playing around with terms to make ourselves feel better about things that we've done. Abortion, the bottom line is murder. That is so hard. I I cringe when I say that. That bothers me. That bothers me. It's the truth, but you know, uh the truth is hard and for all of us. And the truth is, I will always say this, Jonah, and you know this. And as I, as I uh, come before the congregation every Sunday and I preach, I come with absolute humility, recognizing that, no, I've never had an abortion. Obviously, I'm a man. I've never dealt with a, a wife or a girlfriend ever having an abortion, never in my life. Mm-hmm. However, uh, I come with absolute compassion, knowing that we are all flawed, imperfect people. So I may not have that situation. But I have other situations in my life, uh, either sin issues or areas where I'm weak. And so I approach everything from that vantage point. But even when I deal with myself, I have got to deal with the truth of God's word. Whatever the situation is, not my opinion, not anybody else's opinion. What does God say? about our struggles. And if we read through the scriptures, God does not mince words about our sin. And so abortion is murder and it is a sin. But here's the incredible part of it. There's restoration. There's redemption. There's forgiveness. There's the blood of God that covers our sins and forgives us. And and you can actually live a very fruitful, happy, joyful life. And if you would allow God, you use that situation in your life to be a blessing to other people. Right. So why do you think like women use these, you know, men to agree with it, but why do they use that smoke screen or that mask that, oh, it's, it's my body, my, they sugarcoat it. Because like you said, the truth of the matter is that it really, it's murdering a a live person. You know, there was a song that I heard. It's kind of like one of those funny meme songs, but it said something so profound. I wanted to share it. So how is bacteria in life on Mars, but a harpy is in a life on earth? So it's it's a, one of those funny things with uh you know one of these singers that like to sing meme songs and it's real but I I heard that and I'll repeat it bacteria is life on Mars but a heartbeat isn't life on Earth and I just really thought to myself how almost I, I was a little bit disgusted in a way and just disappointed with you know how people think and how far we have gone from heaven you know because. You know, this is not this is not God's plan, uh, according to him. And according to Jeremiah 1, 5, it says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Isn't that interesting? Because that's exactly the scripture verse I was getting ready to read. Yeah. So God is really speaking through this podcast right now. <laughs> yeah. And and by, by the way, guys, we don't look at each other's notes. We come in raw and we just kind of want to speak our minds and uh, say how we feel. But yeah, so God knows us before we are born. He knows the hairs on our head, the follicles on our body. He knows our fingerprint pattern. He knows everything about us when we're in the womb being formed. And in fact, I'm going to go a step further than that. According to the scripture verse that you just read that I was getting ready to share in Jeremiah 1 and 5, he says this, before I formed you in your mother's womb. Yeah, before. Before. So before you were even formed. Before, before, you, wow. were, before you were a twinkle in your mama's eyeballs, he already knew us. So we existed in eternity before he formed us. Our inner being, before everything, conception, before conception, 
So here's the thing, right? One of the the huge arguments, and mm -hmm. you, you'll get this, and I think I think part of this is because of the guilt and shame that comes along with with this, of course, right? And I think the the whole idea that it's just a blob. I hate that argument. So, so do I. It's the worst argument. But I think sometimes people lean towards that way because it releases them temporarily yeah, yeah, yeah. of their guilt. If you think For that sure. you're just getting rid of a blob, then you don't have to deal with the fact that you're literally getting yeah. rid of a human you're being. You're killing someone. You're, it's murder. Yeah, that's the truth. And yeah. so I think a lot of people live there. And I think a lot of people live, um, you know, uh, their own truth. Yeah. What their truth is, they don't believe in absolute truth and absolute, absolute truth. And I know this is a very bold statement in this woke culture, mm -hmm. but absolute truth is the word of God. There is nothing outside of the word of God that is truth, the word of God. And if the word of God says to us, to Jeremiah, that I knew you. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, then that tells me even at the point of conception, mm -hmm. it's life. It's yeah. it's a human being. Absolutely. Right. So uh there there's really no argument other than weak uh cultural yeah. or wokeism yeah. arguments to say that. You know, you, yeah. you could search that on Google. When does life begin? I could search her right now and it's at conception because that's when life form is made. Like This is science too. And I know a lot of people like to go with the science arguments, but no, life begins at conception. It's not a blob of cells. It's not, they, they like to say it's a fetus and it basically it isn't everything technically. I mean, aren't we just made up of cells right now? We're humans though. We're a life. We're a life. <clears throat> so yeah, it's a, uh, it's hard. It's hard to believe that people believe this. And they, they try their best, like you said, to smokescreen the argument to kind of hide from that, from that sin. Because it, it hurts. I think it, it hurts. It does hurt. And, and it's almost like they're not ready to admit it yet. And that's why you have all the issues later down the road. And it's very it painful, right? right? And so yeah. what happens is, you know, um, if you're younger in your younger years, if this is something that you have done, um, I, I don't know how to prove this scientifically in our bodies, but when we're younger... I think we're able to repress some of our decisions, um, some of the things that we've done that are not good, but over the years as they are undealt with, and there are many unresolved conflicts in our lives from our teens or our young adult 20 and 30, but something happens when we start getting into our later 30s and 40s where a lot of these things that we have done in our lives if they're undealt with and they're not healed and they're unresolved conflicts they come to the surface and if we still don't deal with them they begin to affect our relationships mm -hmm. with each other uh, our marriages our children our relationship with god but it can also here here's the very um interesting but very sad thing Undealt with conflict can also physically, medically, emotionally uh, result in really bad things in our in our lives. So you've got you've got people that are depressed, that are anxious, that are fearful, that are that are, and that a lot of that, and that are even sick. There are some sicknesses that can that those decisions can lead to, and if those things are not dealt with, and so that's why it's so important for the church. As hard as this topic is, and I'm just really, I'm going to be honest here. Listen, yeah. if you know me, I'm very open. I'm very vulnerable. I'm very transparent. Mm -hmm. This subject is really bothering me today. It just, I'm bothered. Yeah. I'm bothered, first of all, because it grieves my heart, because it grieves God's heart. But I'm also bothered because I don't want this podcast to bring any more shame or hurt to anybody else. But even in saying that, as a ambassador of Christ and as a minister of the gospel, I believe this is now this is my now this is an opinion now, okay, that the church, the church should never shy away from difficult situations, difficult topics. And the church in general has put their head in the sand. Yeah. And maybe we did to some degree too. 
And so we have made a decision. I have made a decision, uh, although it, it can hurt. And sometimes there are some negative repercussions. Like the last time I spoke at the school board, you understand now that I'm being called a local harm because of yeah. what I spoke at. And I know that we'll do a podcast on that later on. Uh, but when we begin to speak truth and the truth, not my truth, not anybody's truth. See, speaking our own truth is, is a part of new age. Right. Uh, but the I'm talking about speaking the absolute, the absolute truth, truth, which is the word of God. Word of That's God. it. Yep. We don't add, we don't take away. Then when we do that, then we open ourselves to criticism, to judgment, to misinterpretation. And that's okay. Yeah, because uh, if they persecuted Jesus, if they misinterpreted it, uh, misinterpreted it, <laughs> if they misinterpreted <laughs> yeah. what Jesus said, yeah. then yeah. I'm not Jesus, far from Jesus, for right? Sure. But they'll they'll also do to us for those that stand Absolutely. for righteousness. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, so. it's just a result mostly of sin. I mean, I, I'm I'm sure some married couples have gone through this procedure, but a lot of the times it's unmarried couples, young. Uh, you know, younger people from, you know, 17 to 21. Now that's just a guess, but that's what seems the, the biggest uh, community uh, doing these procedures. So it's, I feel like, you know, if you're, if you're going, if you're going to take responsibility enough to get into the act of sex, then how, how are you just going to completely waver off the fact that, you know, now you've created a life from that act you did it's re it, it's all about responsibility and accountability and basically what this is doing is just shying off all of that it's taking all that away but by saying hey listen i don't have to take accountability so it's kind of like a uh i, I don't know it's kind of like a push off that like it's it's not taking accountability for your actions so that's why i feel personally um you know, before obviously this is biblical. Before uh, marriage, just don't engage in these sexual activities. And I feel like a lot of this would stop if the sin would stop. Is it ever going to stop? Probably not. Most likely not. Um, it's just I, I believe that marriage is a big part of this because it says in Hebrews, you know, marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and the sexually immoral. So I guess basically why. Do you believe a lot, a lot of young people are doing this? Do you believe uh, young people should be married or do you think that's kind of uh, off the subject? What do you think? No, I think that's a huge part yeah. of this issue. It doesn't, doesn't totally take it away, no. but I believe when you're married, there's different, your mind is in a different place. That's sure. just, yeah. You know, um, full disclosure here, because I know that this might, might come up, you know, mm -hmm. uh, before I knew the Lord, Okay, um, I lived with my wife. She was my girlfriend for three and a half years. I didn't know the Lord, and I didn't know, honestly, did not know that that was a sin. Um, so we we were we were in sin, one hundred percent. And I just I bring that up because I know people are, are quick to judge, and I just believe that's a part of my testimony. And so, uh, but once once we gave our hearts to Jesus. Once we surrendered our lives to him, then we knew at that very point that it's time to live differently because you can't be a Christian and live the way you used to live. That's just that's right. being hypocritical. And that's why the world hates the church. That's why the church in some ways has become the laughing stock of the of the world. And so we've got to be real careful as believers. We're not perfect, but we ought to be living differently. So we did that. We we got married and we're living righteously before the Lord. But I agree with you. Listen, we live in a sin-filled, fallen world. So sin, it's, it's, a, it's, a, part, it's a part of the world. And, uh, but uh, what I think is, and I, I watched a documentary several, I don't know, it was several years ago, but where um, it was about abortion and sexual immorality. And um, several of the women that were interviewed in there confessed that they were using abortion as a form of birth control. And it just, wow. it, it made my, my stomach sick yeah, yeah. Uh, for the act, first of all, because it grieves right. the heart of God. Right. But it, it made me very compassionate that these women are so lacking in real love, real love, and that they don't value themselves enough Right. To to just say, hey, listen, I am worthy of a good man. I am worthy of a man making a commitment to me in marriage 
And so I think, um, I agree. Listen, we're not animals. So we have, the Bible talks about uh, self-control. It's, right. a, it's a fruit of the Spirit. Right. I just, I, th- I think if you're putting all this effort into, uh, you know, getting the abortion as a contraceptive, why not put the effort into just birth control in general? You know, I, I don't know all the details on it. I know some people react differently to it, but wouldn't that be, I don't know, more cost effective? Not that it matters with cost, but I mean, we're talking about life or death here. We're talking here. about life. Yeah. So I, I, <laughs> it's probably, it does involve that. So why not put the effort into contraceptives beforehand or if you're in sin, well, obviously people, like I said, people are always sin. I just, contraceptives, let's just talk about that. Why, why can't we put the effort into that? Why, why are we killing life when we have the opportunity to never let it happen? Contraception is available, obviously. Yeah. Um, but really, and th- this is going to sound incredibly old fashioned, yeah. but I'm, I'm willing to risk that because it's the truth of God's yeah. word yeah. and it's called abstinence. Yeah. Self-control. (laughs) Self-control. If you are not married. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're talking to the unmarried folk and I know it's hard. I know it can be very tempting and we, we have desires that want to be fulfilled. I get it. I have been there in my life and many have been there, although we don't want to talk about it, right? We all want to sugarcoat it and and laugh about it and think it's so funny. But I think it goes down to, John, I'm going to tell you what I, I, I think is um, entitlement. We want what we want, when we want it, how we want it, and nobody, no pastor, no parent, no spiritual leader, and not even God is going to tell me what I can do with my body. So a Burger King society, so have Burger it your King way society. when you want it. Microwave it up for a minute, and you get exactly. it when you want it. Yeah. TikTok scrolling society. So, sure. Absolutely. Dopamine hits after scroll after scroll. Exactly. But it's just, yeah. Incredible. But I have seen, I'm telling you, in my years of ministry, I have seen the shame and the guilt that comes after a little 10-minute mm. time of fun, if that long. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I've seen the the pain that it causes. I've seen the shame. Uh, I've seen, I've just, I've seen, it, it's just, it's not worth a short period of fun for 20 and 30 and 40 and potentially your entire life of shame and to be to be affected over one act that you could have prevented. Now, I'm not just talking about women. I'm talking about men sure, because yeah. men like to put pressure mm-hmm. on women. Yeah. And I'm going to say this, and this might be a little controversial, but when it comes to a relationship, particularly engaging in a sexual acts. I'm going to say, yes, the woman is responsible for her body, but the man is responsible for the relationship. For sure. Yeah. So he has, he should be a man and a man is not, uh, you know, I'm this old or, uh, I've got this kind of body or yeah, I'm yeah. this, or I'm, I'm athletic or I got muscles. Yeah. A man is you're responsible. Yeah. You want to honor that girl. You want to honor that woman right. that's in your life, mm-hmm. honor her before the Lord, because you're not only sinning, but you are causing her to sin. Mm. And that and that's a huge deal. Now, that's not popular. That no, in this culture, especially not anymore. No, yeah. it's not popular. And I know I'm going to be looked at as uh-huh. old fashioned and and all these things. But that is the truth of God's word. That mm-hmm. sexuality and sex is for the marriage bed, and it is mm-hmm. incredibly fulfilling in the marriage bed. Right. Before right. that, it's perverted. It is. It's temporary. Mm-hmm. It's. Uh, it's not everything that it can and should be the way God intended. Because mm-hmm. here's here's the thing. I know I know we're kind of going off topic a little no, bit here, good. but let's 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 say this. You know, people get squeamish and they get all all prudish around the topic of sex. But yeah. here's the truth of the matter: God created it. Yeah. Not only for mm-hmm. procreation, mm-hmm. but God created it for pleasure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Within the marriage bed, within absolutely. The, within like the said. marriage bed. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and so there's a place for that. Mm-hmm. And it's in the marriage bed. And we have got to uh, teach mm-hmm. and encourage our young people and even older people. It's not just young people. <laughs> absolutely. Listen, I, yeah. I, I have counseled older people, 30, 40, and 50 years old. Oh, I bet. That are stepping out and doing mm-hmm. things that they ought not to be doing. Mm-hmm. But, you know, whether you're 15, 25, or 55, mm-hmm. the negative implications are all the same. Right. They're all the same. And and so sure. um, I think, uh, you know, sometimes you consider abortion um, for uh, birth control. And listen, 
I get that there are some women that find themselves in a really, really bad situation. You're caught up in a relationship. You really think he loves you. You really think he's going to be there for you. You really think he's going to support you. You really think you guys are going to get married and have a family. And for the most part, th th there may be some cases like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And so he justifies it. Well, I'm, you know, I'm going to do this before I get married because we're going to get married anyway. Right, right. Uh, that's that's putting uh, what is it? That's putting the cart before the horse. <laughs> you know, that's and true. It's it's it, it's <laughs> if he really loves you for real, for yeah. real, he will wait, He'll for, wait you. for you. Yeah, absolutely. If he is young lady, listen. If you're listening to me right now, if he is not willing to wait for you, he is not worth your breath. Not only is he not worth your breath, he is not worth your body. Yeah. You have value. Mm -hmm. God created you. Uh, you have something to offer a man who's willing to say yes at the altar of God. Don't give yourself away. Young man, don't put pressure on that girl. Honor her. Love her. Uplift her. Uh, make her, uh, keep her pure and holy before God. And if you do that, and I know that's hard in this culture, but if you do that, God will honor you in that marriage bed more than you'll ever, ever imagine. Uh, you'll, you'll have more pleasure than you think you're having now. I, I assure you. Uh, that, but let me just mention with this, Joan. Okay, I know, I know, we're coming to an end yeah, of, of the yeah, yeah. podcast. I know that, uh, and this is controversial. This is definitely controversial. But I want to bring it out because I know as people are listening, this is going to come up, and I just want to make sure that that I can touch on it, at least touch mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. Uh, you know, people will say, "Well, what about in the case of incest or rape?" Right. 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 That's heavy. That is, yeah, yeah. Because I can't, I can't speak to it. I haven't experienced it, right? I'm going to have an answer, but yeah. he, here's what I know that many are going to be thinking right now. Yeah. They're going to say, well, Pastor Tony, you're so uh, opinionated with the Word of God. What if, what, what if it was your wife? What if yeah. it was your sister? Yeah. What if it was your mother? Mm -hmm. And I would say I would be absolutely devastated beyond what you can even think or imagine like we all would be right i've never been in that situation i cannot speak to the emotion although i can imagine that i would be totally crushed and broken and confused and god why would you allow this to happen and all of those things right but if we believe that children are a blessing from God. And I think we can all agree with that. God knew us before he formed us. Mm. My, if I were counseling someone that was in that situation, my recommendation, my pastoral recommendation is carry the child. The child has no fault in the act. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. Incest, rape, molestation, horrible, yeah. disgusting, detestable. There's nothing, there's nothing good yeah. about that. But then I would say you can put the child up for adoption. Right. Let the child go into another family and let that child be raised by other people. Yeah. If you so chose. Now, that, listen, that's hard. Yeah. And I know I'm probably going to get a lot of flack from no. this or, or negative comments uh, because I would hope and pray. That if I ever face that situation, that I would be strong enough with God's help to uh, make the decision that I just mm. mentioned. Yeah, it's tough. And then, of course, there, there's the other. Well, Pastor Tony, okay, what about in the case of a woman who is getting who could die? Yeah, right. Right? <laughs> it's tough. Very tough. This is why this, this, this subject is very controversial. Right. But, um, you know, here, here's what I would say to that. First of all, that situation is such a rare situation where yeah. with all the medical advancements that we have made in this, in this country, it, it is rare. Now, does it happen? 
100%. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I, I don't I don't live in a cave. I understand that these things uh, do happen. But I just, I just want to read something. Uh, this is in regards to uh, just the sanctity of life. We have lost the reverential uh, sense of the sanctity of life. We certainly believe, right, that all human life uh, is sacred. And that is, uh, all life is created by God in his image, according to Genesis 1 and 27. And all human life, and when I say all, I mean all human life is valuable. Uh, from preborn babies to the old to the physically or mentally challenged, we're all precious in God's uh, sight, right? And in his heart. You know, if there is danger to a mother who is pregnant, which is, again, it's very, it's very rare, but if there is a serious uh, situation, uh, historically, uh, the Christian faith would, would always favor the life of the mother. Mm, right. If it was a real, diagnosable, situation where it is um for sure right imminent to life or that the mother is going to die okay okay uh then at that point but we would never recommend for that woman or that couple to make that decision alone you Mm -hmm. we we go into prayer we ask god we bring in our spiritual uh counselors our pastors or whoever is close to you spiritually speaking it's, be a tough decision. It's, it's a very 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 difficult decision and then at you know at that at that point um uh, you've got to make a responsible decision with clear conscience um uh, and it will still be a very painful painful decision right. but those situations jonah they're so rare yeah, they are so rare. The majority, and I don't know what the percentage is. I'm sure someone can probably mm-hmm. look it up. The percentage of uh, men and women making the decision to have abortions just because, yeah, because it's convenient. Because I I decided to engage in an act mm-hmm. that now I'm pregnant, and this baby is going to get in my way and is going to keep me from going to school or is going to keep me from a job or I'm going to lose this guy if I don't get an abortion and he's putting pressure on me. I I just think that situation just out of entitlement alone is probably so high in the the 90 percentile, you know, versus the situation where a mother's life is actually Mm -hmm. in, in danger. And so there's really... So much more that we can talk about, but let me just—I'll end it with this. And you know, I as I was preparing for this, uh, this this morning, and my heart is very heavy, still very, very, very heavy. And I, I pray that that comes across this this podcast. But you know, um, when in the in the in the scriptures, when Cain murdered his brother Abel, mm-hmm. and when the Lord inquired about where is your brother. You know, uh, to to uh, Cain, and um, God said this to him, and this is found in Genesis four. God said this to to Cain, and He said, "Cain, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground." Jesus, wow! And I believe mm-hmm. that the voice of all of these millions, probably millions, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know the exact stat. It's got to be at this point. Millions of aborted babies, their blood is crying out to God for redemption, for righteousness. And so we wonder why we have so many issues in this country. And I love America. I live in America. I love America. Greatest the greatest country. country in the world. Yep. But... We need healing in this country. We need a, a change of direction. And we need to put, we have the right to put people in places of influence and power in our country that can make the right decision, not just for the people, but before God. Because the scripture says, I was talking to Pastor Greg about this yesterday, that righteousness exalts a nation, 
Well, watch wow. this. Hmm. Now that's wonderful, right? Righteousness exalts a nation. Yeah. But the second part of that scripture is, but sin is a disgrace to any people. Mm. And so I just believe there's so much disgrace yeah. and detestable things in this country because not just abortion, there's a lot of other things, right? But abortion, I believe, is a huge, huge part. But here's the great news. Whether you did that or not, forgiveness is available, redemption is available, Absolutely. restoration is available. Thank God for the blood. If you're listening, exactly, if you're listening to this and you're contemplating, you're in a situation, mm -hmm. I'm asking you, I am begging you, imploring you, do not get an abortion. If, if it's a hard situation, go through, the, go through an adoption agency. There are so many families right now that can have children that would love to adopt your, your child. And so uh, just know that here at Chestnut, we love you. We would help you through any situation that uh, you are in. And so we would love the opportunity to do that. Hey friends, we just want to remind you that we are advancing the kingdom of God here at Chestnut Assembly of God, and we need your prayers, but we also need your financial gifts. And if you are interested, no obligation, but if you are interested in giving to the ministry, a place where we steward God's money well, a place that is uh, is fertile, the ground is fertile for your seed, for your financial seed to grow and to prosper, then go ahead and click the description below and uh, press the link and just give. Thank you so much.